GGRC. Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of GGRC. I'm RC and this little gray guy over here, this is Sushi. Doesn't join me for every episode, but he's here most of the time, maybe half the time at this point. But regardless, today guys, we are checking out Starlink Battle for Atlas. And you may notice here on screen, we have an R-Wing. And that is Star Fox in the bottom left corner. How cool is that? Uh, we're actually on a planet here doing some quests, but before I show off any of that, check this out, because I think this is super cool. Any point when you're questing, you can go ahead, hit the boosters into gear. And we could just fly right up out of here, right through the atmosphere and everything. Super cool. Whoa! Hey, Sushi's impressed too. You can hear him. Right, there we go. We are now out in the cold reaches of space. And you can see that, you know, in addition to space and stars and other planets and everything like that, there are other ships and whatnot. This is the planet we just came from, which is Haven. Uh, we currently have a quest to go to Sonatus and continue the main storyline, which we're actually going to hold off on right now. If we look at our map here, it looks like our ship is right over there. There's the Equinox. That is our normal ship. Um, that is where our crew is based. Uh, but we also have, there's Sonatus, the, where our next uh, quest is going to be at. We have Curite, which is another planet that we can go to. Um, but what I've been doing lately, uh, before I move on to the third planet here, what I've been doing is I'm actually uh, doing a bunch of quests on Haven here. So we're going to actually head back to, into Haven, just so I can give you a taste of what this game has to offer here. So I originally came back here because there was a story quest that we were working on. We were uh, collecting capsules, so that way we could learn more. Whoop. We don't want to leave yet. So that way we can learn more about our crew and everything. Because Star Fox, at the very beginning, he's sort of recruited. And you don't really learn much about the rest of the crew. Star Fox happens to be sort of in the same area when the crew is being attacked. And so Star Fox and Slippy and Falcon and Peppy, they, they all get involved. They all say, hey, we're going to help you out, which is pretty cool. And they're pretty much just added right into the story, which is pretty fun. Um... Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to cut the engine. Anytime you cut the engines, you fall right to the ground. And now at this point, uh, we can go look for quests and things to do, which is pretty sweet. Um, one of the things I do like about this game, too, is that down in the bottom left, you'll see Star Fox there. And what happens with Star Fox is that uh, if you hit anything, get hit, whatever, he reacts. So you'll see him like, oh, you know, if you hit a tree or whatever, you'll see him like kind of back up. Uh, in his seat and everything, which is kind of fun. It's almost like he's got like a, a webcam on him like I do. So me and Star Fox both have webcams on us at the moment. It's pretty fun. So at any point, you could bring up the map and you could go around and look at all the things you have to do. So you actually have uh, a list on the left side here of different things that you can do. So believe it or not, there are species to discover. You, you, you'll you find gigantic animals around that you'll want to scan and you'll put them in your logbook. Uh, there are sites to find, samples to find, uh, but of course there are quests to do, spires to find, ruins to find, uh, wrecks to find, and on this world there's one wonder to find as well. Now you're going to want to do some of these things because they're going to help you collect the two most important things you'll need in this game. You'll see up in the top uh, left there, uh, you'll have the, the orange currency and the blue currency. The blue cur currency is called Nova. It's a bit harder to come by. Um, but the orange stuff, I think it's called Electrum, if that's elect Electum, so something like that. Uh, but that comes in every so often from all of these people that you do quests for. You'll see on the map that you have these little radars, you have these little mining uh, yeah, refineries and observatories, that's what you're doing here. You're doing quests for them, and what they do is they send out these little orange guys, and these little orange guys go and they mine this stuff for you. So every so often, they just send you a plethora of this stuff, and you're gonna need it for a lot of the different things you're doing in the game. Uh, let's actually jump into um, one of these new mining, uh, this refinery here. Let's go talk to this miner here and see what we can do. Uh, we'll set a destination for them, jump back to our map, and here we go. So at any point, you can boost, you can jump in your ship, and you can do little tricks. Oh, see, I actually hit that. You can see Star Fox, he kind of <laughs> kind of uh, recoils back, which is pretty funny. So at, at all times, you're going to have a ton of stuff on your map to do, um, which for me personally, 
This game has a uh, it sort of borders between being very relaxing. Oh, we gotta go save uh, some friends over here. These uh, pink dots on the map, these are outlaws. We gotta take them out. Definitely not on purpose, dude. Uh, where's the other guy? Here we go. Down over here. We got him. Someone else took him out. Appreciate it. So the defend was successful. We got rid of the outlaws, and now at this point we can actually talk to him in here. He's probably going to give us, uh, there it goes, Electrum. That's what it's called. So you can see the next Electrum shipment we're going to get is in 10 minutes. So uh, every so often, they're going to give you a shipment of this stuff. Uh, am I in combat? It says I am. Who's shooting at me? Oh, over here. There we go. We got some of these Cyclopses to deal with, too. So every so often, the Cyclopses uh, are going to show up, and they're going to try to attack the refineries and observatories, too. So you got to be there to kind of help them out at any time. <laughs> A lot of different points here. But you'll find these different chests here. Let's open this one up. And what pops out is a modifier. So these modifiers can actually be used for your guns and your ships to uh, help up upgrade them. But let's let's get into a quest here first. There's actually a lot to show here, and I don't want to put the cart yeah, yeah, before the horse back. here. Snappy, would you? So I've talked to this guy before, but you can see that on the left side of the uh, pickaxe icon that there's three bubbles. Two are filled in. There's one that hasn't been yet. If you go to upgrade up outpost, you'll see that uh, the requirements are zero Electrum, but we need two pieces of Nova to upgrade him. And what that does is it'll uh, supply it so that way his Electrum per shipment goes from 10,000 to 15,000. So, that's a lot of Electrum to get every so often. And we're getting that many more miners to help out with it. So, at this point we could either offer to do quests for him, uh, and he'll send us out to go do different things around the area. Sometimes there'll be things you have to do uh, to help out, uh, you, you know, with, with your uh, map completion status, it'll be like, you know, uh, getting rid of uh, the those Cyclops guys in certain places, getting rid of uh, the uh, these other little runny guys called imps. So let's see what he gives us here. We want, but we can't keep it safe. I'd love to store it in those old silo farms, but they're crawling with Legion. So that's what the the Cyclops and the, the imps, that, that's where they come from. They're called Legion. Um, let's accept this one. Let's go do it. Great. Here's the location of an old farm. Should be perfect. Alright, let's head on over there. I'll go do a quest for this guy. Oh, wow. And I hit that box really, really friggin' hard. <laughs> but any of these boxes here, you can actually explode. And you'll, you'll actually pick, some, pick up some uh, Electrum as well. You also see that here we have uh, different things you can collect. You can collect organic fruits, plants... Uh, minerals and stuff like that and you turn them into those same prospectors that we're doing the quest for right now and they give you stuff for them so there we go the the plucking mini game is basically like you set it up you line the arrows up with the green keep them in there boom you get to pluck them uh, you can also uh, explode these mineral veins here and collect the minerals but you will fill up on them as you collect them it'll show you here you can collect one out of five uh, I haven't had the chance to upgrade that yet, but I'm assuming that's something you can upgrade later. Um, because if you go into your menu here, you actually have the option of going to your Equinox upgrades, and you can go through here and up update all kinds of stuff. So one of the updates I did was uh, Starship tuning. So all ships in my collection get an extra booster mod slot. Um, after that, we'll be able to, let's see, all weapons in your collection get an extra amplifier mod slot. So you're adding mod slots all over the place for different things, which is really important. And I've also unlocked the ability to do mod fusion, which is I can take uh, not as powerful mods and turn them into more powerful mods, which is pretty good. Uh, but you can see there's all kinds of different stuff you're going to get here. Um, yeah, maxing out your pull force on, with the things that we were just doing. Um, you're going to get Warden Research, you know, against the Legion. Um, you're going to get things that help you with your expedition, reveal locations of things here. So there's going to be a lot of things to update. Um, and what you're updating with those mods, just to give you an idea, is you, you have a loadout here. So what you have is you have Star Fox here. He's level 6. He raises in levels, gains XP as he destroys enemies and whatnot. But for your ship, let's say, for example, we want to go into this ship. We want to mod it. 
So you have all of these different ship core mods that you can go in and change. I'm probably not going to go in and change any at the moment because I haven't collected any uh, lately. Um, but you can see here I have one that I can actually fuse. Uh, so we'll do that in just a second here. That should turn that one blue. But what happens is that happens when you collect uh, three of something. So you can see we have three of this one for handling. And it's actually free uh, to fuse it. So let's go ahead and fuse that one. So it'll, it'll tell you, hey, we're going to we're gonna fuse this. This is what you're going to get. Uh, it costs 2,000 Electrum to do it, which is kind of nothing at this point. It's a drop in the bucket. But there you go. There's our new one. It's a blue one. So we're probably not going to use it because it's only for handling. I got elemental resistance set up already. Uh, but you could do this for the ship. Uh, you can go over to your weapons. Let's see, we hit uh, ZL here. And we go into uh, mod weapon. So you can see here, I've already gone through and fused the majority of these. But you can see that uh, we still have two modifiers to unlock for the weapons. Uh, at the moment, I'm using what came with the game, which is the Frost Barrage and the Flamethrower. Um, so, just a, a little note on that. There you could see Star Fox, uh, his XP, what he needs to reach to, to hit another level. Uh, Star Fox also, if we go to pilot skills here, you can see has his own skill tree too, which is kind of cool. And every pilot has their own skill tree. So, uh, before we go into, I guess, the combat and stuff like that, this is actually what came with the game. So, normally, when I first started playing this recently, um, this ship, you know, came separately. So, you actually... I'll pop this off right here and I'll show you a little, a little Star Fox here. So here is little Star Fox. The, the characters that they give you the, in the, the Switch version, which is what we're playing on, obviously, since we have Star Fox. Sorry about hitting the mic there. Um, but you get these two characters. I forget what the main character's name is because I haven't played as him too much. I haven't talked to him too much. But you have Star Fox and this little guy here. And what's cool, though, is that whichever character you pick, like Star Fox, for example, you get this modified controller that your Switch Joy-Cons click into just like your normal Joy-Con holder. So what happens is Star Fox, he clicks in just like that, satisfying click. And then with the ships here, this is even cooler. So with this, uh, this is the R-Wing Star, uh, Star Fox ship. It's kind of cool because you can actually adjust it to look a little bit differently. If you put those up, that's for what it looks like when it's breaking. You put those down, that's when it's zooming. But you can actually pop the wings off. There we go. Look at that. So you got just this piece. You can actually switch the, the wings around if you want. And on the wings, you actually get the weapons. So this is your frost barrage. So that actually clips right onto the wing. Now what's funny is when I actually first started this game, I had this, you know, strapped onto my, my switch controller and I actually, uh, not the uh, frost barrage, but actually the, uh, uh, the flame one here, this one I actually put accidentally put on backwards when I was building it. So I kept shooting backwards. So that's the thing to keep in mind here is that if you have your ship and you put a weapon on backwards, the game will have the weapon shoot backwards. Now, that's also to say, too, if you have the wing and you put the wing on backwards, your ship in-game will show up backwards. Now, this is not going to happen uh, for me right now because I've actually opt out of using this. Now, you know, you might wonder why, because this thing is pretty cool. I actually really enjoy uh, having this. Uh, but using it in-game is not super fun because the way this game works is that you have... Um, sort of a, a digital and, and physical version of it, right? So for those of you out there who don't want the toys, keep in mind that you can buy a completely digital version of this game that includes a bunch of the pilots and a bunch of the ships and everything, if not everything, I think. Um, on the other hand, if you want to collect these things, you can buy them physically, and every time you want to switch out your pilot or ship, you just pop this off at any point during gameplay. It'll immediately take you to the menu, and uh, you can switch them out. However, the not fun part of that is that if you blow up, which I've gotten blown up a couple times, they want you to switch your ship. Now, with the Switch version, you, uh, I guess with the PS4 and Xbox One versions, what you get uh, is one ship. You get one, one ship, and that's it. When you get blown up, you don't have another one to choose from, so you're, you're on your own. you got to start over, right? For some reason, when you blow this ship up, uh, the Switch version actually gives you two ships. You have this one and then a digital version of another ship, uh, which actually, we, if we go into our menu right now, uh, let's see, loadout. Yeah, here we go. So if we go to change ship, you can see this is our other ship here, the Zenith. Um, so 
The problem was that I was running into, and this might be something they just need to update for the game. You know, it might might come in a, a future update, maybe. Um, when I had this and this ship blew, blew up, it would keep asking me, hey, switch your ship. And I keep trying to select the Zenith, but it wouldn't let me do it until I took the Joy-Cons out and then re and then told it to like play digitally because once it was out of this thing it realized oh okay you know they don't want to play with this thing but i wish there was a way to like you know switch between the ships no matter which one you had on here and that's what the big problem was so that's why you'll see me not playing with this on my controller uh, but instead just playing with the pro controller because it's just easier to switch between ships if something happens um so anyway we already got our ship selected let's head back and uh, let's let's head back to our quest here. I apologize for the uh, slight uh, divergence there, but here we go. No telling what's hiding in there. So this is here's these little imp guys here that I was talking about before. These little guys that jump at you. Let's see if this guy will jump on my ship. There you go. You can get him jump on your ship like that, and he'll t try to start ripping your ship apart, which is kind of fun. Uh, but this is one of the many missions you'll get in this game. Is that uh, you'll go into these old. Uh, areas, these old dilapidated areas, and you get these big cyclops guys everywhere that are, they, they've taken it over, basically. So it's your job to go in there and take it back. And once you take it back, it's yours for good. You're, you're taking territory back, basically. There we go, we got some... Oh! I got frozen. We have a nocturne imp. There he is. He's no... <laughs> He's definitely Nocturne now. Nocturne in anywhere. Okay, he's down, and then we got you. Come back here. Nice work. There we go. I've given my workers orders to keep the farm safe now that you've cleared it out. Hey, it's what I do. So there you go. You see, we've now liberated this area. We got a bunch of new mods there, which we could, of course, go check out if we wanted to. Uh, the other thing you want to do, though, when you liberate something like this is you want to search around for things because you're going to see on the mini-map there, you're going to see little white dots. Now, those little white dots are things that you could pick up and sell for Electrum and other things. So, for example, right there, it said uh, if you these cold canisters you can actually pick up. If you pick that up... These you can actually uh, throw out of the way, and you could use against enemies, which is kind of cool. But you're looking for something very specific, this radium cell over here. Now, some of these items you could pick up and trade them in. Other items are big items that you have to carry in front of your ship and take them back to be traded in. So, we're actually going to blow some of these up here. There we go. There's another modifier there. And this is actually one of the fun things to do in the game, is that when you liberate an area you get to go around and blow up all those things because they'll release all of that Electrum that you can collect, which is pretty fun. Just seeing everything explode. Uh, let's see. There's another cell that we can pick up here. There we go. Now, one of the other things you want to look out for, too, on the map is you'll see, like, a little... Right in front of the green ship, there's a little box icon with a circle on it. And that means that there is a chest over here somewhere. So, let's go ahead and see if we can find that. There it is. So let's blow these up, get our Electrum. I tend to use my uh, Frost Barrage because it's just easier to get into tighter spaces like that. Here we go. Once folks got wind of Haven's Electrum supply, Ooh, ships started arriving by the hour. But they brought their problems too. There we go, there's an air filter there. So the air filter is actually something you're going to want to take back to certain people. Artifacts of the Electrum Rush era like this one are prized by prospector settlers. So the, the problem that I have uh, with this game sometimes is that I'm not sure when to take certain items to who. I'm sure there's an icon or something on certain people that you're doing quests for. But sometimes when you get some of these big ones, I'm not completely sure who to take it to. So I'm, I'm thinking it must be this guy. Uh, so we'll, we'll go try it out and see if we can take this back. Now, you might also be wondering in your ship, um, why is it that, you know, I, I can jump, you know, like this and and boost and everything. The boost is obvious just to get around a little bit faster. We'll take it. There we go. Yeah, see, he's telling you he'll, he'll take it. There, do you? Bring it over. Let's see what it's worth. Uh, but you are going to get into situations where you're going to you can platform around. You could jump from platform to platform. Um, it's interesting that they put the platforms in there for you to uh, platform on, though, because at any point 
you can just fly up to the thing you're trying to get up to. So, I don't know, it's a bit strange, but it makes sense, I guess, if you don't want to fly. Uh, let's see. So, we want to deliver this item. So, we got an air filter. So, you can see there it's going to give us uh, 3,000 minor points and uh, 10,000 electrum in an uncommon core. So, let's trade it in. This is good salvage, pal. Thank you. Now, uh, some of these other things we picked up, you see we can trade in the common mineral. We're going to get even more minor points. There you go. That minor point is almost up there. So, uh, if we do one more quest for him, or turn in a couple more things, we might be able to get him to upgrade without having to give him any Nova. So, let's see if we can do that. Uh, let's see. Offer help. Alright, so this quest is a repeatable one that you get from many different prospectors. And I'll show you where it's supposed to go. And what ends up happening here is you got to pick up this condenser. That's what I'm after. And you're going to take this over to another area so that way you can uh, keep track of the electrum that's coming out. It actually goes towards your total, which is a, a good thing. So we'll ride this over there. But yeah, these are the kind of quests that you're going to be doing to grind out and get these things. Uh, or you get your totals up, get your modifiers up, everything. Um, and I'm actually having quite a ball doing just Perfect. these uh, Tell missions the here. And the tower will deploy itself. Looking good. There we go. Extraction is underway. And hey, you ever feel like planting one of these on your own? Feel free. We got plenty to spare. You got it. So if you end up finding loose uh, uh, condensers, you can actually bring them over here anytime you want, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, let's see. And they'll collect the Electrum. Now look at that. You can come back and pick any up as, as you please. Um, I haven't had really any need to do this myself. Um, you're actually going to find these globes here that you can pick. And you can pick the Electrum that way if you so feel. Uh, you can also go up to these veins here. And you can pluck that. And you can get it that way. I think that only gives you like a thousand though. Um, so it's actually, in a way, it's a little bit of a waste of your time unless you are really hurting from some Electrum at the time. Uh, because the deliveries you get are going to be, they're just going to be far better. Here's an engine we can pick up. Might be able to deliver that back to the same guy. Here, I'm just looking for a couple more deliveries that we can make so that way we can get that guy upgraded. There's another engine. I think there was a mineral vein on the way. Here we go. We can pluck a couple of these guys here. There we go. We just got a shipment of Electrum. Seems our prospector friends have been busy. There you go. See, we just got 65,000 right there. Why bother picking like the little thousand things when I'm getting 65 grand every time they deliver it to me? It's it's there's no point. Uh, just a waste of time, really. I thought there was a mineral vein over here somewhere. Where is he? This way. So once in a while you're going to get someone who's getting shot down like we had earlier. And you, you've got to get in there and help him out. Sometimes the guys will give you like nice prizes for helping them. And other times you actually can repair. Um, oh, let me grab that. Sorry, dude. I'll take that. Uh, sometimes you can repair old ships that have been destroyed, too. So if you come into guys a little bit too late, uh, you can actually jump in and help out, which is kind of cool. All right, let's go to this guy. Let's trade some stuff in. Yeah? Look, I'm real busy. What can I do for you? All right, we got all the mining points up. So, okay, you'll see that he is now... Uh... He's got th all three dots, so it is now says outpost fully upgraded. So you have the option of just paying them to upgrade if you have a crap ton of Electrum, uh, Electrum or you can do quests and, and deliver things to them to get them to be, uh, uh, to get them upgraded, which is kind of cool that it gives you the option there. And you don't have to waste Nova doing it, which is important. Uh, let's see what else we can do here before we leave, because we're going to go try to check out one of the story missions here before we go. I guess here I could show you how we actually get the Nova. So there's a lot of different things you can do on the planet that'll help you get Nova. One is you can go to these old crashed ships and you'll get into sort of like almost like a, a, a wave-based fight 
and you'll be able to collect a piece of Nova after that. Um, and you want to do that so that way you can upgrade as much as you can. Uh, let's see, that's Pioneer Wreckage. I'm looking for some other stuff. You might also notice that all of the icons that are on here are things that uh, I have already uh, upgraded. You, one of these prospector guys that you upgrade, or the observatory, I think it might be. Um, yeah, it might be this one. Uh, either way, whichever one it is, they actually fully upgrade to a point where like, they'll show you the whole world and where all the icons are actually located. So let's go do a... Uh, let's see, where were we looking? Not that one. Let's go do this one. That should be... I think that's pretty close, right? Yeah, that's not too far. Okay. Let's go check this one out. Do, do, do. You always have fun doing this. You can actually jump and hit your boost again and do tricks like that, which is kind of fun. Oh, but you want to make sure you don't go too crazy with it because you will fall and then you have to recover. So I've heard a lot of people refer to this game as sort of like an entry-level No Man's Sky, I guess. Um, I haven't actually played No Man's Sky myself. I kind of avoided it after the controversial, controversial release of it uh, a few years ago. Uh, I was excited to check it out, but then when it, once it came out, I was like, oh boy, you know, I'm going to avoid it for now. It sounds like they've actually upgraded that game to a point now where it's it's got a lot of the promised features in it and that kind of thing, but it's taken a while for them to get to that point. Um, but regardless, though, I, I can't really speak to that. All I can say is that I'm having a lot of fun mining and doing a lot of other fun things in this game. Uh, okay, so here we are. We're at the crash ship here. So what happens is you go up to it, you hit decode, and then they'll start decoding it, and the Cyclopses will just start kind of spawning in. So you got this, like, sort of wave-based fight you got to go through to uh, get a successful hack in. Uh, and the whole thing is that you have to stay within this circle the uh, while the fight is going on. Legion incoming. Now, I don't know if these get harder as you go to more difficult planets or not, um, because so far, the, the first uh, few planets that I've been on haven't been all that difficult. Uh, I don't think that this is the game for you if you're looking for a super difficult game, though they do have difficulty settings if you are looking for something a little bit more difficult than easy or normal. Uh, I'm currently playing on the normal difficulty. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm not super duper challenged uh, by the gameplay or anything like that, but it does seem like one of those games where there's a lot to learn and, uh, you know, it could be one of those games where the harder the difficulty goes up, the more difficult things are going to be with combining your weapons and everything, because you'll see what I'm doing there when I'm fighting, is I'm actually using the Frost Barrage and then hitting them with the fire, because some of these guys actually do have uh, a fire tolerance, so you can't take them out. But you see there, we picked up Nova, we got some Electrum, and let's see, what else can we do here? I want to go take out one of these. Let's go take out an Imp Hive. Uh, what happens with these Imp Hives is, you know, they're, they're just on here, you take them out, you get booster mods and stuff like that for taking them out. But they also uh, help you clean up the planet, so to speak. So let's go ahead and set that one aside. And how long we got here? Still not too far away. None of these planets have been so big that it feels like you are completely... Uh, you know, not wanting to go do a quest because it's too far away or whatever the issue is. I've, I've never had that happen. Uh, so far, it's... Oh, here we go. We're actually running into one of these along the way, so we might as well liberate this thing while we're here. And this is what the game does to you, at least to me. You'll be, you'll be on your way to go do one quest, and you'll find, oh, crap, there's, like, all this other stuff I could be doing along the way, and then you get distracted. It is a super distraction game. Uh, which is why I haven't continued on with the main story in a few hours. I'm actually, at this point, I'm probably between the four and five hour mark in this game. And, I'm like I said, I'm just having fun uh, getting more powerful as I go through all of these different uh, places in the planets and doing quests and upgrading. Um, so far, that's been enough for me to really have a great time with it. But what I like about it, though, is like they kind of thought outside the box with this game, wherein with your ship... There we go, we liberated it. But with your ship, you're, you're literally just like floating along 
the ground and doing quests for people like you would as just like a normal character except you have the ability to boost along the ground and I, I just think that that was like such a clever idea um, they're, they're like you know how are we going to solve this issue with doing quests and everything and you know you can imagine them developing the game just saying let's just leave them in the ship they never have to get out of the ship and I'm like that you know <laughs> when I first noticed that I was like that is such a cool idea alright here we go nope pluck the door there we go Gonna have to get that plucking ability updated soon. Alright, so whenever you liberate a place, you can open up these little secret alcoves and you'll find treasure like this. Here's a chest. Now, this game also reminds me a little bit because of the, the space that you have when you're flying. You can go all over the place and you can fight in many different you know ways and, and patterns and everything. Really reminds me of the game Descent for any of you who have played that game back from the 90s. Um, it's a game where, you know, you're just in a plane, you can go all over the place um, in any any direction you so choose. And I, I thought that that game was really, really cool. I didn't play a whole ton of it, uh, but the concept of it was, was super, super cool. And this game definitely reminds me of that. I love the freedom. I love the fact that we can go do all these different things um, on our own accord and in whatever direction we want. All right, we got some more chests to find here. Now you're gonna see that the the white chests are just normal, normal everyday chests. See if I can make the jump there. I can't. Here's where the platforming comes in, though. You might be able to jump on this canister. I did this earlier, not so much this time though. I jumped on another object and then was able to jump up there. Let's see if we can do this here. There we go. Oh, we didn't quite make it. There we go. We made it that time. Uh, but yeah, you'll see white chests. And the white chests are just chests that are out in the open. But the colored chests, I feel, are very helpful because they actually guide you in, in, to let you know like what color um, you know, weapon or element it's supposed to be that you, you need to use to get by. So this chest... Oh, this chest might actually be underground. So we might actually have to break in first to open that. So sometimes you'll get over here and realize, oh, the chest is in here. That's why I'm seeing it on the map. So you gotta break through this thing and get in there. But obviously, Frost Weapon breaks up these, you know, heat crystal things here. Break that up, there we go. So they're letting you know that it's a red chest. You're gonna need something that will help you break through a red door to get in at it, which is kind of cool. Let's see here, we got... Uh, here we go. Okay, so here's the one chest we were trying to find inside here. After the awakening, Legion were suddenly everywhere. Just stepping foot outside your door could mean the end for you. So that guy's just giving you little little footnotes here and there every time you, you open up one of those chests, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, so that red chest, let's go open that one up. So the red chest, as I was saying, like you need the frost one. So you see it's a heat cache. You're going to use uh, frost to open it up. If you use uh, one of the your uh, heat missiles on it, take that. If you use your uh, your fire weapon on it, he'll, Fox will be like, oh, there's no effect on it. So you got to watch yourself when you're doing that kind of stuff. Um, I think we've done all the important stuff we can do here. I mean, we could waste a ton of time here looking for, for goodies and stuff like that, but let's move along to the next thing that we were doing here. And we are yep, heading this way. We are cruising. Now, this thing here, actually, we should talk about this as we get in. This is like one of the spires. Now, a spire, obviously, is, you know, it's going to be protected as well. A lot of the things in this game are always protected by these Cyclops characters. It's one of the downfalls of this game, I think, so far, is that the enemy variety is not very big. So far, I've seen two different enemies, maybe. So that has not been the, the best, in my opinion. Um, so once you get to these, you're going to find that there is a... These warden puzzles are vexing, aren't they? Have you got any different weapons to try? I have the frost weapon. There you go. 
so you can see that one moves okay so we're just we're just moving things around here all right so that will go down that will go over so different weapons you have will actually affect these these shields differently and this is this puzzle is actually much different from the other one that I had to do the other one I had to do it just showed you an emblem of which one you needed to shoot next and then you shoot each one in order not very hard at all all right so that one's in the right spot let's get that one over there we get this one over there there we go so now this will open this will provide us some more stuff to this new data this spire's rise there we go. reached deep into haven's liquid core this has to be the reason why the planet doesn't rotate so you get other little interesting tidbits like that too if you're big into lore every planet sort of has like its own thing going on not just with the creatures he even says this planet doesn't rotate it must be because of the spire so there's always like little things like that going on which i think is pretty cool all right we're gonna check out this last thing and then we're gonna head over to a new planet that actually has our uh, story mission on it the imp hive these little annoying little imp guys they have a hive and they will come out after you to try and protect it but Whoa, there's a bunch of legions coming after. Alright, so we gotta be careful here. Well, one of the other things I haven't used a whole lot here is um, this shield that I got. Oh, take these guys out. There we go. Oh, get off of me. Let's open this up, get our modifier. There we go. Back to the imp hive. Uh, but you have a shield that you can use. So, in addition to boost, you actually have this shield that you can put over your... Uh, your ship. Um, I find that the button that it's actually attached to is not very handy to be using during battle because you're trying to move around, trying to trying to shoot, trying to do a bunch of things at once, and then to try to hit X at the same time is just a no-go. It's not going to help. Uh, let's see. Okay, we got that. We killed the, the imps there. Alright, we're going to head back out into space. And here we go. And we're going to head the way to Sonatus and do our next story mission here. So you guys get an idea of what the characters are like and that kind of thing. And we are through. Now, the last time I did this, I actually pointed myself at the Equinox and it gave me the option to fast travel. But I guess it's not going to do that this time. But you can do hyperdrive. So let's jump into hyperdrive. Boom. And when you're doing hyperdrive, though, you want to be very careful because if you hit an asteroid or something, you are, you're done. So, But you will move that much faster, which is pretty cool. This is kind of tranquil. Kind of nice. Well, I don't think we have any reason to go to the Equinox. So look, we're just going to head to Sonatus here. And during this point, you know, you get a nice little break. You can just kind of hang out. Uh, along the way into planets, though, even while you're in space, there are other things that come up. Uh, you're going to run into uh, outlaws that are trying to attack, uh, or they're, they're setting up traps for you and they're attacking other people. Uh, you're going to run into shipwrecks uh, where you can explore and try to find stuff. So there, there's a lot of different things going on in this game. Okay, we're going to jump out of the hyperdrive there just because I don't want to hit any of those asteroids. Good lord, there's a ton of them. Huge asteroid belt. See, uh, question mark there? Where is that? So there is something that, it's not too far away. Let's go check it out. Trying to watch my boost meter here, make sure I don't lose it. Oh, and of course, I can't forget, Fox does have his friends show up in their own R wings. And, uh,. They try to help him. Slippy, Peppy, and Falco. Near your position. Might be worth checking out. Okay. Yep, uh, Peppy, Slippy, and uh, Falco all show up to help you. We will show that off before we're done. Here we go. Here's an outlaw trap here. Alright. Where are you guys? That's it. We took him out pretty quick. Alright, so there's a heat cache. There you go. No enemies to fight this time, which is kind of nice. And then that that is that ship. That's all there is to it. That usually is what you're looking for. Oh, man. 
we got to get out of here. We don't want to hit that heat canister uh, with one of our weapons here while you're in there. That will mess you up big time. All right, slow it down, Fox. Let's try to get in here. There we go. That is what I was trying to do. There it is. Okay, back to Sonatas. But yeah, again, distraction the game. There's, <laughs> there's so many little things to do in this game. And I, I actually adore it for that fact. Um, the other thing, too, is that this game feels like the first good Star Fox game in a long time. Because, you know, Star Fox doesn't get many games as it is. And that one that they came out with on the Wii U was just not great. The control was terrible. Um... You know, the mission, missions and everything seemed fine, but, like, it was it was that two-pack game that came with... I forget the name of it, but you had Star Fox, uh, the game where the control was just not fun to use. And then you also had the other game come together where I think it was Slippy and his uncle or something like that. And they, they set up all these TVs everywhere and you used the Wii U con uh, uh, controller to, like, move cameras around to take out the robots and stuff like that. Both of those games were, like... They're just okay, and they, it was like, here's a two-pack of games that we, like, weren't sure about, but we put them together. You know, that's that's kind of what it felt like. Um, but this feels like a fully realized Star Fox game. I kind of feel like this is what Nintendo needs to do with Star Fox when they bring him back with his own game, so. Okay, here we go. We're almost to Sonatus. Actually, we could ride Hyperdrive right into the planet. Here we go. In we go. I'm here. Where's that prime at, Doctor? The prime? I don't know. It was moving so fast. Don't worry. You got a way to track it? No, I... Wait. I don't know if it'll work, but the extractor it planted. You need to go there. Don't sweat it. You're in good hands. Carl, what's happening? Who are these people? Hashtag Starlink, yo. They're trustworthy. I'll explain later. For now, what can they do to help? Oh, well, when the Prime Legion plants extractors, my theory is they maintain a connection. So if you can sever those connections, the Prime should react, giving you its location. Get rid of the extractors to find the Prime. Too easy. Star Fox, he's cocky, but he knows what he's doing. I just heard something bellow. I don't see it. What was that? Interesting. I don't see it. Uh, but anyway, yeah. In that conversation was one of the characters in this game I cannot stand. And it's the... It's the social media YouTube streamer kid. And it's just like, whoa, look at these guys. Here's one of the creatures. Alright, let's cut the engine. So, at any point, you can go up to these unknown creatures that you haven't discovered yet, you scan them, and then what you do is you actually circle around them, like this. Oh, he is moving fast. I'm trying to get around him. Partial there we go. Complete. That's a partial scan. scan. To complete the Usually you gotta profile. do it about three of them, I find. You don't want to spook them too much, because then you may not see them again for a little while. You just have to do them along the way. Partial scan complete. Okay. More specimens to complete the DNA profile. I just got l really lucky right here that four of them were like surrounded uh, by each other here. Here we go. Oh, missed a couple there because I wasn't facing him. DNA profile there we complete. go. Fauna identified. So these guys are vibrosaurs. That's fun. A vibrosaur. Wow, here's another guy. Its genetic makeup is somehow both insectoid and reptilian. Fascinating. So I really, really enjoy the uh, the animals that are in this game. I love the like crazy creatures that they've come up with, but I've always been a big fan of monsters and crazy creatures. So, but you can see you also get XP for uh, finding these animals and creatures and species and stuff. So, uh, if you go to your map, you can actually see how many. Yep. So they they have another three species on this planet. But look how this is another gigantic planet here to uh, check out. Um, each one so far has been about the same size, so, you know, not not too big a deal or anything like that, but... Alright. Let's onward to our quest. But yeah, as I was saying, though, this game has uh, characters so far, there's only one that I really don't like that's a part of the crew. 
and he's just like the the YouTube streamer guy and I just I can't I can't tolerate it I can't deal with it because he keeps talking about hashtags and and how many streamers he's got how many followers he's got it's just like oh my god it's kind of insufferable in my opinion here we go here's the imp hive we can take out along the way again distractions Get off my ship. Get out of here. Oh, I was picking up an energy cell there, which we don't need. There we go. Take that in out. There we go. Uh, the, these energy cells are used for different uh, quests. So what happens is the energy cell can actually suck up Legion energy, and you can use it to power things, which is kind of cool. But I haven't had uh, to pick one up in the wild and use it for anything yet. It's always been for a quest. All right, we're going to book it over here to the... Whoops, to the quest. And you'll see everything has changed because th there are parts of certain planets. Yeah, there's parts of certain planets that are just full of a crazy storm going on. So the flight engine is not going to work in here, but it doesn't really matter. Because we're not going to be flying anywhere anyway. Alright, so we got some weird, interesting Cyclops going on here. It's the Iceclops. So I'm just going to use the fire missile on him here. These guys actually have a shield on them, too. Alright, here we go. So these fights are a little bit more interesting. Uh, you have these nodes here that you have to take out. And I have done a couple of these before. The, the nodes shoot out those little things there, and you have to jump over them. Nope. Or keep yourself from jumping into them. And I'm going to call in our uh, our crew here in a second, because you'll see what happens after we take out the nodes. Oh, there we go. So we take them out, and then over here, this reveals what you're really fighting. So there you go. Our crew shows up. Again, don't get hit by those swinging things that it's got. And then they play a little bit of the Star Fox theme, which is cool. And that helped me a lot right there. Get off me. So anybody who's a Star Fox fan of long time old, you... I think you're pretty much going to love this, to be quite honest. Oh, see, that guy, these guys shoot out like fire rings here, so we got to be careful with them. So every fight has been the same in that you're taking out these nodes and then taking out the center console guy there, but in the way that they fight has been different. They, they're always shooting out different things at you. Okay, here we go. I think I could take this guy out here in this that part. Oh, is there another one? Oh, there's a third one. Didn't even see him. Okay, there he is. Let's get him. So now we gotta wait for our our friend's ability to charge back up. But at, we able to take this guy out though. We didn't need him for the second round there, which is great. See ya. That's amazing. I'm picking up a signal, but it's faint. Wait. There's another extractor. The Prime planted another? So soon? Nothing to worry about. It's as good as gone. We also noticed that, hey, so once we took that from? thing out... You can destroy extractors, but you're no outlaws. The, the storm the is gone. Called dirt. Well, Earth, but close. More importantly, their flagship has a Nova drive. <gasps> really? Oh, I'd love to study it. Oh, dude, you should come with us. Look, we're out of beds, but you can just do what I do and sleep in Hunter's ship. Uh, you what? Maybe later. Have you found the second extractor? Nope, but I will soon. All right, we'll go find the second one here. Um, but there you go, guys. The, the, the quests do get a little bit more varied than that. You know, I have 
like I said earlier, I was collecting canisters uh, before uh, to learn about the different crew members. Uh, but for the most part, I mean, this that is the game. You are you are fighting a lot. You're zooming all over the place. You're flying everywhere. Um, you're trying to take out all of the different Legion characters uh, and enemies and whatnot. Uh, you're scanning species. It's just, just a lot to do. Um, and if you're into a game that this this is definitely a light and fun, you know, action sci-fi game. Um, like I said, I'm I'm having an absolute ball with it. I think it's a great game. Uh, I think that this game will easily be on my list of must-play games for this year at the end of the year. Um, but I, uh, I definitely recommend it if you're looking for a good sci-fi game that maybe isn't like super, super difficult. It isn't super tough to understand. I mean, it definitely has a lot of layers, especially with all the upgrades uh, and everything that you can do. Look at all the Nova I got, so I can actually go in here and upgrade a lot of different stuff. Um, but I will, I will do that later. Uh, but I want to thank you all for watching. Uh, like I said... Great game, worth checking out. It's on Switch, which is what I've been playing, but I believe it's on PS4 and Xbox One if you want to check it out there. Um, I really wish they actually had a, a, a PC version of this, but uh, regardless, like, you know, you could always wish, right? <laughs> you could always wish for something. Uh, but regardless, everybody, uh, thank you for watching. GG, and I'll see you all next time. GGRC.